Ostrich and the Pelican The ostrich one day met the pelican, and observed her breast all bloody. Good God, he said to her, what is the matter? What accident has befallen you? You certainly have been seized by some savage beast of prey, and have with difficulty escaped from his merciless claws. Do not be surprised, friend, replied the pelican. No such accident, nor indeed anything more than common, hath happened to me. I have only been engaged in my ordinary employment of tending my nest, of feeding my dear little ones, and nourishing them with the vital blood from my bosom. Your answer, returned the ostrich, astonishes me still more than the horrid figure you make. What, is this your practice, to tear your own flesh, to spill your own blood, and to sacrifice yourself in this cruel manner to the importunate cravings of your young ones? I know not which to pity most, your misery or your folly. Be advised by me, have some regard for yourself, and leave off this barbarous custom of mangling your own body. As for your children, commit them to the care of providence, and make yourself quite easy about them. My example may be of use to you. I lay my eggs upon the ground, and just cover them lightly over with sand. If they have the good luck to escape being crushed by the tread of man or beast, the warmth of the sun broods upon, and hatches them, and in due time my young ones come forth. I leave them to be nursed by nature, and fostered by the elements. I give myself no trouble about them, and I neither know nor care what becomes of them. Unhappy wretch, said the pelican, who hardenest thyself against thy own offspring, and through want of natural affection renderest thy travail fruitless to thyself. Who knowest not the sweets of a parent's anxiety, the tender delights of a mother's sufferings, it is not I but thou that art cruel to thy own flesh. Thy insensibility may exempt thee from a temporary inconvenience and an inconsiderable pain, but at the same time it makes thee inattentive to a most necessary duty and incapable of relishing the pleasure that attends it, a pleasure the most exquisite that nature hath indulged to us, in which pain itself is swallowed up and lost or only serves to heighten the enjoyment. The pleasures of parental fondness make large amends for all its anxieties. The Butcher and His Customers Two men were buying meat at a butcher's stall in the marketplace, and while the butcher's back was turned for a moment, one of them snatched up a joint and hastily thrust it under the other's cloak where it could not be seen. When the butcher turned round, he missed the meat at once, and charged them with having stolen it. But the one who had taken it said he hadn't got it, and the one who had got it said he hadn't taken it. The butcher felt sure they were deceiving him, but he only said, You may cheat me with your lying, but you can't cheat the gods, and they won't let you off so lightly. Prevarication often amounts to perjury. The Flea and the Man A man, very much annoyed by a flea, caught him at last and said, Who are you who dare to feed on my limbs, and cost me so much trouble in catching you? The flea replied, Oh, my dear sir, pray, spare my life, and destroy me not, for I cannot possibly do you much harm. The man, laughing, replied, Now you shall certainly die by mine own hands, for no evil, whether it be small or large, ought to be tolerated. Small evils are as bad as large ones. Uh -huh.